Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So if you guys want to make your mic uh, go from sounding something like this to sounding something like this, then make sure you watch until the end of the video as I'm going to be going over some tips and tricks and some filters that you can use in OBS to make your mic sound much, much better. Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So that little uh, snippet you heard at the beginning is just trying to show you the comparison between the two different uh, microphone settings. So that first recording you heard was pretty much just my Blue Yeti microphone. Uh, there's no filters on it. There's no post-processing. That's just the raw, uh, what it's capturing. And the only thing I've changed on that is uh, the gain setting on the back of the microphone. Now, the, the next recording you heard is what has all the filters on it. So that has a compressor, it has gain, it has a bass filter, and a bunch of different things I'm gonna be showing you today. Now, hopefully you can appreciate the difference in sound. Uh, personally, I think it sounds a lot better. It removes some of the background sound, and it also just makes my voice sound a little deeper with a little bit more bass, which is always a good thing, uh, especially if you have a little bit of a higher pitched voice, it's good to add a bit of bass to it. It just sounds nicer. So let's get right into the video. So first of all, we're gonna to need to have our OBS opened up. So if you guys don't already have OBS or you don't know how to use it uh, generally or like vaguely, then you kind of want to go watch my last video where we set up uh, OBS for screen recording and audio capture. So if you don't know how to do that, go check out my video. It's in the top right hand corner here and then come back to this one. Okay, so if you've done that already, you have your OBS, you have your audio device in here and all you want to do is make it sound better. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to do that. So we're going to go into the little settings bar beside our audio device here, and we're going to click uh, filters like so. Now in here, if we click the plus button down here, you can see there's a few different filters. Now you can play around with these filters however you'd like. I'm sure some of you may have already seen them, uh, but getting the right settings it can take some time. And I'm just going to show you my settings and hopefully they'll work for you. So the first one that I use is noise suppression. So pretty much what noise suppression does is it tries to remove uh, some of the constant sounds in the background. So for example, that buzzing sound you may have heard in that first recording of my microphone without filters, that would have been the fans of my computer spinning. And with noise suppression, that removes that sound. Now, it's important that your noise suppression is not too high because if it's too high, it's gonna uh, reduce the quality of your mic. So, uh, so if you have a very quiet space, you're probably not gonna wanna use noise suppression as it's gonna reduce the quality of your mic. So the further right we go, the less suppression, the further left we go, the more suppression. So I like to keep mine between 15 and 20. Uh, obviously it's gonna depend on how loud your space is. If you have a very loud space, you may wanna put it up to 20, but I wouldn't go much higher than 20 because once you go past that, you start to hear the difference in quality. So I'm gonna leave mine on 15 for right now, and we're going to add another filter now. Now, it is important that the order of these filters, so pretty much I'll go over why I have the order I do at the end, but it is important and it's gonna make a difference. Okay, so now we have this VST 2.x plugin. So pretty much uh, OBS actually allows you to add external plugins into the uh, program, which is extremely useful. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna be using a plugin that allows you to alter or it's kind of like an EQ plugin. So it allows you to alter the tone of your voice, change the bass frequencies, the treble frequencies. And we're going to go over that at the end, how to install that, but just add this one in for now. Okay. We're going to hit plus again, and now we're going to go to compressor. So we're going to click. Okay. Now we can see the default settings of compressor here. Uh, it starts by giving you a 10 to one ratio of compression, which is not what we want. We want to bring this down to about three or four. Now you can play with this number, all this stuff here you can play with to make sure that it uh, works for your setting, but three is what I use and sounds the best for me. For the threshold, we're gonna move this to about 20 decibels. Um, again, that should just be a good number to use. You can play with that and anywhere between like 22 and 18. The attack time, I'd like to keep this uh, as, what is, oops, excellent, close that, as short as possible so that it picks up the recording the fastest. Oops, we're going to go back here. Filters. Uh, the release time, I like to keep my release time, again, back down as quick as possible, so to one millisecond. And then the output, uh, so pretty much whenever you're compressing something, it's going to make it a bit quieter. So after we compress it, we want to gain up. And by gaining up, that means we're just simply just going to add to the volume uh, and make it sound a bit louder. 
So I like to keep mine at about three. Again, you can play with this. If you're very close to your microphone, you might want to put this a little bit lower. Otherwise, you're going to be uh, piercing people's ears with how loud it is. And then you can just leave this thing down here to none. All right, now we're going to add our next plugin. And this one is an optional plugin, and this is called Noise Gate. So pretty much after we do our noise suppression, after we have the plugin and after we compress everything, we're going to see, well, do we want to be picking up sound or not? Now, what Noise Gate does is it pretty much says, well, if the volume of your microphone is not at a certain threshold, we're not going to pick up any sound at all. Now, again, this is useful if you have a really loud space, you have a lot of background sound, and when you're not speaking, it'll be completely silent. The only thing is uh, it tends to cut off your words slightly. So even if you put this attack time down to about one, uh, the fastest possible, and pretty much what the attack time does is it's how long it takes before it starts recording. So once it hears 32 decibels of sound, then it'll take one millisecond before it starts recording. Although it says one millisecond, it actually takes a bit longer and you'll hear it that the beginnings of the words or the end of the words will start to be cut off. Also, if you keep this threshold too, uh, too low down here, then what's gonna end up happening is when you're speaking, if you say a word uh, quietly or like a softer sound, then it's gonna cut that word off completely. Now you do have to play with these sliders here. Uh, I'm not gonna be using noise gate. I just figured I'd show it to you guys in case you wanted to. I used to use it and it was okay, but I did notice when I uh, listened back on the recordings that it did cut off the words a bit. Again, this is better than having a ton of buzzing. Like I'd rather have my words cut off a tiny bit than have a ton of buzzing in the background, but it's not something that I'm gonna use right now. So I'm just gonna click on this eyeball over here to turn that off. Okay, and then the last one here is gain again. So pretty much it's kind of redundant because in compressor we have gain, but if you wanted to add even more gain or just have a separate setting for it, then you could click gain here. And same thing as the compressor, you can gain up or gain down, uh, however you would like. You can see when I put it up here and then you look down at that blue Yeti thing, it keeps going red. That's because it's too loud. And yeah, so I'm just gonna turn that off again because we don't need that. Now let's get into the plugins. We have our filters, uh, everything should be sounding better. I recommend that you guys are testing this out by just hitting, for example, start recording. Say something into your microphone, hit stop recording, listen to it, and then play with some of the settings. That's what I had to do to get these settings. Uh, but now we're going to move into the filters. So if we go back to here, we click filters and we go to VST plugin. And you can see if you guys hit this, so you hit please select plugin, you're not going to see either of these plugins here. That's because we first need to install them. So the one that we're going to be using is called Mar Marvel GEQ. And I'm going to show you how to install that right now. So what we're going to want to do is open up our web browser. So for example, I'm using Google Chrome and we're just going to go to this website up here. It's called voxango.com. I'm going to put it in the description down below so that's easy and you guys can click on it. Now, once we get to this website, we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to see that we have download VST for Mac, download this for Win64, etc. And you're going to type or not type. You're going to click on the one that suits you. So obviously I'm using a Windows machine. I'm going to click on this one and we see that we have it downloading already. Once it downloads, we're going to open this up, run this like this and click yes. Now we're going to accept the terms, click next. And we're only going to click on the ones that we need. So for example, if you're running a 64 bit machine, you don't need the 32 bit host. Uh, you can leave pro tools. I don't really know what it does. So I just left it to make sure that it works and then next. And since I already have it installed, it's, uh, it's fine. We can just click no, but you guys are going to click next and you're going to install it. Now make sure you remember where you install this because we're actually going to have to, uh, move it. So once we have it installed, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our file directory here. We're going to go to wherever it's installed. So mine should be in C drive and then program files. And you'll see you have a little folder called Voxango like this. Okay. Now from this Voxango folder, what we're going to do is pretty much just take this interior folder. So this Voxango Marvel GEQ and you're just going to drag it somewhere where you can store it. So I'm going to drag it to my desktop for right now. Click continue like that. And now it's on my desktop. It is down here. Okay. So once we've done that, now we're going to go back to local C drive. We're going to go back into program files 
and we're going to create a new folder called VST plugins. So I already have one created here and you can see that I have the Luxango folder in here. But what you need to do is if you don't have this, just right click anywhere, new folder, and then just call it VST, no space plugins like this. Now it is important that you have these capitals and everything is spelled the same. And once you've done that, you're going to hit enter. Now I already have this folder, so I'm just going to delete this new folder because I already have one. Uh, now, once you have that folder VST plugins, you're going to open it up and you're simply going to find your box angle folder and you're going to drag it in again. Mine's already in here, so I'm not going to drag it in. Now, once you've done that, you should be able to go back to your OBS. So let's open that up. And once you go back into your OBS and you click VST, you should see Marvel uh, GEQ in here. If you don't, just make sure that inside of your program files that you have the VST plugins folder and inside of that folder you have the plugin that you just installed. Another thing that you can try doing if this doesn't work, and this is what I actually had to do, is go back to your uh, installer. So for example, let's go down to downloads. We'll go to this Boxango setup, click yes, and then go through the same steps. But this time when it asks you to install it, change the path of where you're installing it directly to that VST plugins folder that you've already created. And that should work for you guys. If it doesn't, just leave a uh, comment down below and I'll try to help you out. So once we have this installed, what we're going to do is we're going to keep, we're going to press open plugin interface. Now it's going to load up something that looks like this. Yours is going to have all the white bars in the middle. This is just because I have a preset already. Now we're going to go to presets and here we go. So we have some presets right here. So ultra bass boost, lo-fi, mids boost, side bass, uh, and so on. Now this is where you can play with the different settings. So the one that I use right now to make it, and I think it sounds the best I've played with them, is bright and bassy. But we do have ultra bass boost, and they pretty much do exactly what they say. Presence, this one makes you sound a lot clearer, but it kind of slurs like some of the higher pitch words. I don't know. You have, you have to play with them and see which one works for your voice. Now, once you have the one that you like, you can just click on it and click set as default, set as default, and then you can click activate like that. And there you go. You should see this popping up here. And again, you guys, if you know a lot of stuff about EQ or just playing with these, you can change uh, these bars yourself. So it's not like you have to use a preset. Just the presets sound a lot better if you don't know what you're doing. And personally, I don't really know what I'm doing. I just use this thing because it makes it sound better. Now, once that's done, you all you have to do is just click uh, the X button here, and there you go. Uh, your microphone should be sounding a lot better. Uh, so yeah, you're probably going to have to play with some of these filters, noise suppression, so on. You can add noise gate, you can add gain, uh, until your microphone sounds better. And this definitely is going to make your microphone sound uh, much better than it did before. Personally, I've been playing around with audio settings for about a week or two now, and this is the best solution I've found to make my microphone sound as professional as possible. So let me know what you thought down below in the comments and if this made your microphone sound better. And if you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment. I do respond to most of the comments. And leave a like if this video helped you out and help me out by subscribing.